In this tutorial, I'm going to tell you how to turn this into this. This is a real VHS tape, not a filter. But how is it done, you ask? Well, it's just two words. Chinese sweatshops. Kidding! <laughs> it's a DVD player and VCR. Wow. Plus, all this other stuff. Compared to a filter, this does take more time, money, and effort. But the result is nostalgia as pure as my virginity. Nostalgia. Here's what happens. You turn your digital video into a DVD. That DVD enters a DVD player, which is connected to a VCR with a VHS tape. You record that video from the DVD onto the tape, then transfer it back into the computer with a capture card. The first step is to connect your VCR and DVD player. I do this with an S-Video cable. Just make sure the DVD player has the S-Video output, and then connect it to your VCR's input. Now they are one. Another way is to use a VCR-DVD combo player. I have one, but it doesn't work, so be careful when buying them. You can use any camera for this method, but I prefer cameras that have a servo zoom. Zoom! zoom. zoom. I also recommend shooting at 29.97 frames per second, since the VHS tape automatically assumes that frame rate, but it's not completely necessary. If you do shoot in 24, you'll likely have timing issues with your VHS footage, and you'll have to go through and make one frame adjustments so it matches with your original edit. Once your video is shot, edited, color corrected, completely done, that's when it's time for VHS. Here's the settings I use to turn the video into a DVD. If you're working in horizontal or vertical formats, you have to squeeze the video onto the 4x3 frame and resize it back later. If you don't stretch it, it'll come out like this, and you'll have to scale it up even more, therefore losing quality. No! Once I have the exported file for a DVD, I connect a separate DVD drive into my computer, add the DVD, and burn it with an easy program called Toast. And then when the DVD is toasted, <laughs> I put it into the DVD player. There's many types of VHS tapes, and they all have slightly different looks, but the main quality difference is between VHS and SVHS. SVHS has 400 lines of resolution versus the 240 in a standard tape. SVHS only works with certain players, but it has a much more subtle look that some people really prefer. <laughs> Looking good. Here's a better example to see the quality difference. Once you've chosen your VHS tape, put it into the VCR, and while the DVD is playing, hit record. I like to connect a CRT monitor like this to see what's happening. If you find this video helpful, give it a like, buy some merch, donate to the Patreon, anything helps. Also, if you're looking to turn your video into VHS and this is all too much, I offer a service to do it for you. Info is in the description. You can use this method to bring your nostalgic ideas to life, whether it's a commercial, an unsatisfied customer, music video, or just something you see on an old television. Over the years, I've done this for a bunch of different brands and artists with projects ranging from retro, to found footage, to just pure wacky 90s insanity. So what are you waiting for? Order now. Now we just recorded from DVD to VHS. The final step is to get it back into the computer. Take an S-Video or composite cable from the VCR output and connect it to a capture card in your computer. I highly recommend this capture card. It's great quality that uses USB and it comes with its own free capture program. The final task is to hit play on the VCR and record on the program. And voila! Now you have authentic VHS video. Yeah, cool. You did it. A cheaper option is to just buy an old camera like this online. Or like this. They all give their own classic look. Problem with these cameras though is they don't always have the best batteries, so you have to plug them into a wall outlet. Ooh. <laughs> You'll still need the capture card, and you have to live import all the footage you shot, which means waiting. Opposed to a digital camera, where you just drag and drop a bunch of files into your editing program. I create my graphics in After Effects by mimicking a lot of old ads. I also have help with plugins like Red Giant Universe and Element 3D. 
Universe has great effects like Long Shadow, AV Club, Analog, and it even has its own VHS filter, which is convenient, I guess, but I think it looks so dumb, so if you use it, I'll kill you. And then I use Video Copilot's Element 3D to create cheesy 3D VHS logos like this. <laughs> here's how I sound normally. And here's how I sound with some analog processing. To achieve this analog sound, I EQ the dialog cutting off at 200 hertz for lows and 7500 kilohertz for highs. Then I add analog processors like these and experiment with presets. If all that is too advanced, just focus on the EQ since it's really doing the most. All these elements combined can create an immersive retro experience much more than any filter. What's shaking? Keep in mind this is just my method, this is just how I've been doing it for years, and I really enjoy the aesthetic. Say you love making movies! I love making movies! So, by giving this method out, maybe it will inspire you to create something interesting. Maybe you can make that 80s porno with your stepsister that you always wanted to. Dreams can come true. Thanks for watching and stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned.